Coach, why don't, why don't you just, uh, if you could, just brief us a little bit on what the past few weeks have been like with the guys and Shark Week and going forward. Um, well, you know, Shark Week is Shark Week, and uh, uh, I thought our guys did a great job of attacking it. Before that, we went on a team retreat, and uh, there was a lot of... Um, uh, we call it psychological challenges, mental stuff that they have to overcome, and in that, in the team retreat, and they did a really good job of that, and then came back, and I mean, they attacked the Shark Week, and so I was pleased with uh, Phil Byer, our strength coach, should get a lot of credit for it because he had those guys in shape to handle what we did at Shark Week, and so um, was pleased with that. They then they got three days off and. We went for two hours today, and then we'll kick off a big one tomorrow. Like, how mentally tough does that make a team, especially with a bunch of newcomers, and what kind of foundation is that set going forward? You know, I don't know if I can quantify it. We try to do the best job as we can as a staff to um, put them in a place of fire. That's what we call it, and, and see how they respond. And um, for the most part, we're really pleased with the response. Uh, Jerome, with so many new guys, does it still feel like a bunch of newcomers, or have you spent enough time around them now that it feels like you know your team? You've been around them for a while. No, I, I feel real comfortable around them, and I think they feel comfortable around, around each other. But um, you know, in a two-hour practice today, there was probably three or four things I had to stop and explain. You know, what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, where you know, if you have guys for a couple of years, it's not something that you have to you know really explain. And so um, there's some newness to it, to it, but then there's also some familiarity to it also. How do you see Doug stepping into his new role as the Kansas State point guard? Uh, Doug has really embraced learning um, what we want him to do as a point guard and be as a leader. And uh, he's, he empties his cup every day and allows us to fill it. And so I've been real pleased with that. And, uh, and, but, you know, like with everything, every new phase of what we're doing, there are new challenges that he has to face. And then it's up to us as a staff to uh, confront him on it and then give him guidance on how to get through it. And so um, there's, there's going to be a continual growth. But love the kid. I mean, if, you were, um, if we were playing football and he was the DB, uh, you're not getting open and he's going to win the 50-50 ball. And if you flipped it and he became the wide receiver and you the DB, he's going to go catch that pass. He's that kind of competitor. And so I love having him. I also wanted to ask a recruiting question for you. We've seen you guys get involved with some highly rated recruits recently that Kansas State traditionally hasn't been all that involved in. How do you think you've made an impression with some of these guys? And what's kind of your philosophy on you know chasing a five-star recruit versus some others? Um, well, NIL definitely helps. You know, our, our alumni have done a great job of, um, you know, helping step up to the plate and uh, help Wildcat NIL uh, along with some others. And so uh, that's been real important to, first of all, getting guys to, you know, I mean, it's just a part of the business right now. Uh, we've always had a terrific product here. I mean, like the fan base here is the best in the country. Uh, the the league we play in is the best in the country. And, um you know, so uh, it, it's uh, and there are kids out there that value the family environment that we have here and the the small town feel, the college town, and you know, being the the pro sport in your in your town. You know, I mean, that's just you know it, that's appealing to a lot of kids out there, and it doesn't matter if they're four star, five star, whatever. But um, I've always taken the philosophy or the approach that that pretty girl won't dance with you unless you ask her, and so I got no problem asking. Uh, in your guys' first year, you mentioned that, that Marquise and Ish were so uh, important to kind of the gelling process of bringing all those new guys together. This year, with, with, with Buddy and, and David and Taj, how have they stepped into that role a little bit? And what has their role been in kind of getting this group together? Yeah, no, D David Gasson's been uh, incredible. Um, his confidence level is at all time high, and just you can just see, you know, how he carries himself, you know, how he practices. His personality is really blossoming, and 
that that definitely really helps Taj also is coming along Ta- Taj hasn't had a big of a role so he's still you know fighting and stuff and you know buddy still trying to figure some things out so um not quite the impact of ish you know fourth year college guy and Marquise a fifth year college guy um but definitely important in um how we've been able to recruit and then now uh, as we prepare for the season now what's been the biggest thing that surprised you about Coleman since he got on campus? Mm. Yeah, no, no, no surprises, man. He's uh, he's done a really good job of rehabbing his knee and uh, changing his body. Um, you know, he's really embraced uh, Phil and uh, what, what we're doing in the weight room and Luke, what we're doing rehab wise. And, uh, you know, he knocked out Shark Week, you know, for a kid who spent six weeks in rehab and, you know, um, a slow build up to to getting in shape the way he responded to that challenge was super impressive and um you know his basketball iq is really going to help us and then it seems like just from the little bits that you know we've seen him out in public or whatever that that david castillo kind of has a confidence that's above what you would see from a a, a true freshman what 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 about him and his personality do you like yeah he uh he definitely has a, a approach of a professional, right? Like he, you know, he has, he's got championship habits, man. Like, you know, how he approaches, you know, pre-practice, post-practice, how he competes in practice, his, the way he talks to his teammates. And, um, you know, when things get tough at practice, you know, he, he gets the, he's the very best in them, those moments, the very best of him comes out. and. And so, yeah, he's not he's not your typical freshman. We knew he was a winner. That's why we recruited him, and uh, he's been better than that being on campus. I know this is still a team of newcomers in a sense, but, you know, some of the newcomers are experienced college players who have played three, four years in college. Uh, how much does that help the gelling process when you have guys who – you know, maybe newcomers to K-State, but have played college basketball for as long as some of them have? No, it helps a ton. Um, you know, they've been through the, you know, get up early for a workout or um, lift and then go shoot. You know, the they don't miss home. They've been away from home. You know, there's a lot of, like, maturity things that um, they've been through already. So then it comes down to basketball and personalities and, you know, they've been yelled at before by a coach, so they know how to respond to it. You know, they've, you know, been in real heated competitive practices and, you know, they know how to control their emotions. And so so all that the experience they have coming in really helps. And then guys who have been around winning programs understand, you know, what it looks like, you know, off the court, like, you know, how much they spend time together and, you know, and, uh, just all the team building things and why they're so important. Have you learned anything about your team over the last few weeks that, you know, maybe you didn't know for sure, uh, but you can sort of now confirm over these last few weeks when you've tested them? Yeah, you know, um, they, they rise to the occasion. Like, you know, our team retreat, some of the things that we do there, um, definitely take them out of their comfort zone. And to see them all step up to the plate, you know, that was, that was great. And then Shark Week, you know, that, takes you out of your comfort zone you know and you have to try to punch punch through paper ceilings you know it feels like you can't take another step and and you got a whole lot more in you and and so to watch them all you know and how they encouraged each other and, you know bonded uh that was impressive and how the new guys emerged uh, or some of the newcomers emerged as uh, leaders or you know locker room guys uh, you know as they've transitioned to k-state uh, you know um you need a variety of, of people, right? And uh, just because someone is a leader in the basketball environment doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be the leader in the locker room because that's a different environment, you know? And, and so allowing guys to operate in their strengths, like the comedian in the locker room is not going to be the voc- necessarily the most vocal person on the floor. You know, that's a more of a serious time, whereas opposed to when they're, you know, at their apartments or whatever, you know, so I think we have different guys that lead in different moments and that's okay. 
maybe a little bit of a different question, but I'm curious as to what you would say you like best about taking a group like this where they're almost all of them, with three exceptions, I guess, are learning you, your staff, and this system for the first time. What challenge challenges you, and what do you like best about that challenge? Um, Phil says this all the time, like that, um, you know, just it's the ingredients that the chef works with. So when I tell him, man, you've done a great job with these guys' bodies, he goes, you know, Coach, y'all, y'all brought some really good guys to the to the table for me to work with. And I think uh, that's the same thing with us as coaches. You know, the the talent level that we have um, higher than what we've had before across the board. And so that's that's fun to work with. And then now it's just about like. Um, uh, an alignment to the assignment. Can can we get everybody in line to what it is that we want to accomplish this year? And so that challenge is, is also a lot of fun. From the flexible standpoint, multiple position guys, how do you feel going into day one tomorrow about that? It seems like you have quite a few guys that can do many, many things. Well, you hope so, right? And so we're going to, next couple of weeks, we're going to figure out, they're going to get us a chance to they, they will get a chance to tell us what they can't do, and uh, and then we'll we'll go from there. You, like you know, right now, um, you know, as a staff, we feel like we got we do have guys who are versatile and can play multiple positions. But you know, like I said, over the next two weeks, they'll tell on themselves. I wanted to ask about Max Jones. Uh, you know, he's a guy who's played at two colleges and you know has been through, I guess, a lot of different experiences throughout that process. Uh, how much does that help him uh, on the court and off the court? And, and what role do you see him playing on and off the court? Yeah, uh, you know, I think what helps Max the most is that he plays with a chip on his shoulder. You know, as a high school kid, he didn't have any scholarship offers till right at the end. You know, Tampa Division II school went there with a chip on his shoulder and, and really blossomed. Was able to transfer to Fullerton, play Division One basketball, went there with a chip on his shoulder and really blossomed. That came here this summer and um, it took him a little while to adjust to the speed and the strength and everything that uh, goes on with high major basketball, but he's done it with a chip on his shoulder and he's starting to blossom. And so, um, you know, I expect Max to have a really good season and doesn't matter what his role is for us, that he's going to blossom in it. You talked a little bit about the versatility. Also, it seems like you have more greater length on, on this team physically. Is this, would you say the makeup of this roster is kind of what you've been working towards as far as, I guess, the physically the, the abilities they have? Or is that your job always as coach to adjust to what? Yeah, no, we, we will try and we'll bring in the best players that we can get and uh, that fit who we are as a staff and then adjust to their talents. You know, um, you, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to ever have like, well, this is my system and I want to recruit to it. You know, I mean, if we have to play four guards because our four guards are the best for the five best players on the team, then that's what we're going to do. And if it's the other way around, one guard and four forwards, we'll do that too, you know. But I do like the pieces that we can, um, if a team plays big, we can go big. If a team plays small, we can go small. You know, I, I like the fact that we have big wings who uh, can both dribble pass and shoot as well as post up. And I believe the size that we have this year is going to help us defensive rebounding because we haven't been as good of a defensive rebounding team as we need to be. This is now the second year where you're going to get four new teams in the league. Uh, thoughts on getting the Four Corners schools in and how weird is that to adjust to even more change in the league after being a coach for so long and it being pretty stagnant. Um, we have practice tomorrow. <laughs> That's as far as I've thought about, you know. Um, I will say this about our league, you know, Big 12 was the best basketball league in the country before last year, and then we added the conference champion, right? And then we we're the best basketball league in the country last year, and. Now we've added four schools, one of them that's picked to win the national championship, and we have four other or five other schools in the league that people are picking to have a chance to win the national championship. So, you know, that's 
at least six games this year. We're going to play against a team that in the preseason people thought had a chance to win a national championship. And so that has to make it exciting for you as a coach and a competitor. You always have a word on your on your shirt. Today's word is love. Why, why love? Yeah. Um, well, one of the three words I write on the board before every game is love, joy, and freedom. And I, I want when people watch our teams play, uh, you know, they're around our program, they can sense how much as a staff we love each other, how much we love our players and, you know, how much uh, they love us. And uh, But the other side of that is that some people, um, they just love the lifestyle of basketball and they don't love the game. And uh, for us to be as successful as we're capable of being and guys to accomplish what they want to accomplish, they got to fall in love with the game and not just the lifestyle. And obvious question, how excited are you for the first practice? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I was super excited uh, that we got to have everybody for July. This is my first time, three years now, third season, and uh, never had a whole team in July. And so that was really exciting. And then, um, you know, just we had a really good preseason, I felt. And so I was excited about that. And so now I'm really excited about the next step that uh, in this whole process, we got 43 days before our first game, and I'm excited about seeing how far we can go from here till then. And, and we won't be a finished product in 43 days, but we've got certain things we got to get in in order to give us a chance to win that first one. And so, you know, just the whole process of this thing is exciting. It was exciting to wake up this morning and feel a chill in the air, and man, you know it's basketball season. And so that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> You've obviously had to adjust the way you recruit with the transfer portal and 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 NIL becoming so much more prevalent. I was wondering, have, have you had to adjust your coaching style at all, too, in this new culture? Do you find yourself teaching or coaching the guys any differently than you did five years ago? Um, nah, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, you, I think you'd have to ask the people around me. Um, you know, like, man, these guys, you know, there's a, a – point in time when the portal and NIL stops, right? Like that that's part of the end of, well, April, May, June, and then you get your team and then like, look, the NIL, the discussion of that and transfer and all that, all that's out the window. Now it's about let's, let's win. Let's figure out how we're gonna win because good business is when both people get what they want, right? So if the player gets NIL, he gets to be in a new position, whether it's, uh, you know, playing at a higher level or having a different role, whatever, you know, he got what he wants. But what we want out of this is to win a championship, right? Have great character kids who will help us win a championship. And now it's their turn. We delivered on ours. It's their turn to deliver. And, and then we have to hold them accountable to, to get into that. So that accountability piece on our end doesn't leave. You know, that um, telling them the truth doesn't leave. The loving them through discipline doesn't leave. I'm, I'm going to do those things uh, regardless. I was Felt like I did it five years ago, and uh, I pray that I'm doing it every day now. And if I'm not, I hope I have a staff that look me in the eye and tell me I'm not not doing the job. Uh, I also want to ask about shooting. I know during the offseason you really wanted to upgrade in that area. Now that you've seen them for a while, how much better do you think they can shoot right now? Man, you know, we haven't done, like, I have. we have this, like, shooting drill we do that's like a, a litmus test to, you know, tell you where you're at and, Man, last year, I'm going to tell you, like, in that drill, we were really good, really good at it. I didn't, um, I didn't expect us to, to miss as many open shots as we missed last year, you know, because when you go back and look at it, we got good looks. We just didn't make them at times. And, uh, and so um, we're going to do that drill for the first time tomorrow, and then I'll see where we're at with it. But, um, you know, stat-wise, we've been pretty good shooting the basketball, and so then you have to ask yourself, are you good shooters or are you playing bad defense? And so that that's me as a coach. I'm like, yeah, we're shooting whatever from three, but that means our defense sucks. Or, man, we're really uh, doing a great job of defensive rebound. Oh, that means we're not going to the glass hard enough. Or if we're offensive rebounding really well, and it's like, ah, oh, we're not blocking out. You know, so I'm always like, it doesn't matter what is there, I'm always thinking, okay, well, what is not there? You know, what, what are we not doing well, so. You mentioned uh, wanting guys who love basketball. Uh, how much does this current group of players love basketball? Um, 
you know, I, I don't know. We'll we'll know at the end, you know. And and as they keep going, it's like, you know, I know they like uh, being around each other, and uh, it, they seem to have smiles on their faces for the most part when they walk in the gym. And so, um, but it's all the like. You know, it's everybody can show up for practice. It's all the other little things that go into it that as you examine through the year, you'll find out whether they love the game or the lifestyle, right? Are they just going to – are they excited about Bram being full, right? Is that what they're excited about, you know, that, that everybody knowing their name? Or are they excited about when practice ends that they're going to go sit in the cold tub and then the hot do the hot cold treatment and then – you know, stretch and then come back later and, you know, get another stretch in with Phil and, you know, they're going to watch film or practice, you know, that, that that's when you find out if they really love basketball or if they just love the lifestyle. Coach, you mentioned having all your guys by July this year. How much further along is this group in terms of team chemistry already compared to years past? Man, it's, that, that's hard to judge. I know that uh, David and Taj say, like, like things are – going pretty well and they, they, they all the guys like each other and so you know that's kind of the thing it's just hard to put a which one's further along or whatever because team last year really liked each other you know they, they, they did for the most part so you've got one uh, uh, public schedule exhibition game I assume then your other one is is it going to be a like a scrimmage against yeah. another school and what is your philosophy on that what do you what do you try to get out of those op two opportunities? Man, I, I, we, if it was up to me, we'd do two close, you know, scrimmages because you can get do so much more. You can do some half court stuff. You can, you know, exhibition game. It's forty minutes. You know, that's it. And uh, um, you know, you try to pick a team that you feel like is really going to challenge you. Hopefully, kick your butt. And then, because it's always like a a week or so before you play a game or two weeks whatever it is and so it gives you something to like harp on and film to like go back to and you know so um, that's kind of what I look look for another high level team that's gonna you know be real physical with you and challenge you. Is the exhibition game kind of good though it's kind of I guess a, a run through to, to kind of as a to get to get the idea of what game day is going to be like or yeah you know I mean you know it, it has a purpose and I understand it I just it's like with anything if you can have 50 or 60 minutes of basketball then you get to play more guys more and uh, as opposed to being limited to 40 minutes and so if I can get 60 I'd rather get 60 than 40 in these types of things can you kind of give us a rundown between a chore, Bay, and Uganda, and kind of what? It's, obviously, they're all forwards and stuff. But what, what different things that they're going to bring, and what do you like best about each of the three? Um. Well, the chores, you know, played five years of college basketball, and so he brings some maturity. Uh, he he won, played in the junior college national championship. You know, uh, in JUCO, he went to the NCAA tournament at Samford, and you know, so he brings that to the table, and he can really shoot the ball, and uh, and when he wants to, he can sit in a stance and guard, and so um, you know, li like that about him, shot maker. You know, like it's not just squared up looking at the rim shooting it; he flips it up and it goes in pretty easy for him. Um, Ugana's got great size, and he's a you know, rim protector, he, you know, I mean, he's won the percentage-wide leading shot block guys in the country last year. And, uh, we, we, we expect him to be a defensive presence to do that. He's got, he got some offensive skill, too, you know, to him that uh, he hadn't really been allowed to show uh, yet. And so we'll see that. And then bai has got so much potential and upside. And, I mean, he runs and jumps and, you know, he's quick off the ground and, um you know, uh, it, it's going to take him a little bit, uh, but I'm um, excited about his potential. Let me get my pronunciations in, in season form here soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> no problem.
And in this beginning part of the season, when you're not necessarily worried about the game you're going to play in three days or whatever, how crucial is it to just have the time spent, really, to focus on the guys and getting all the new guys playing as a unit together? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think uh, Frankie Muskelly said this in our staff meeting today is that uh, we know how many practices we have before the first one, and it never feels like it's enough, right, because of how many things you want to get in and stuff. So, um, you know, for me, it's just about, you know, get in, uh, put, making sure we have the things in that we need to have in and have a plan for getting the rest of it in. And uh, as far as the guys playing together and stuff, you know, I mean, they've been, they've been doing it since July. So um, and now it's up to us to figure out in this period of time what they're, the, how to put them in position to be the best version of themselves and help them understand that.